Yo, yo, here we go. Gonna do this quick. Uh, I believe there's about a 91% chance of MSTR qualifying for the S&P 500 in Q2 and wanted to share some math. This was easier to do than making a post. So hopefully you guys are cool with it. And let's just make this bigger. Okay, so what I did here is look at the current price of Bitcoin, current price of Bitcoin is $106,044. The threshold for MSTR to be included in the S&P 500 is about $95,240. So the price of Bitcoin, we need to go down about $10,800 within the next six days, which is about a 10% decrease in order for uh, strategy to not have the earnings in Q2 be more than the last three quarters combined. So, so as a reminder, the last four quarters combined need to be positive earnings for the company in order to qualify for that final threshold to be included in the S&P 500. So I wanted to do a quick background probabilistic analysis on what is the probability that this happens. So I looked at Bitcoin prices, so you could see down here, I take Bitcoin prices from today all the way back to down at the bottom of my spreadsheet, the 17th of September, 2014. And I look at the open and close prices on those periods. And I look at the different uh, multi-day periods. So I look at a six day period, a five day period, a four day period, a three day period, two day period, one day period. And I look at how much the price of Bitcoin has changed in each one of those individual uh, by day periods. And the summary of this analysis is up here, up in the upper right hand side. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see. So going back to the 17th of September, 2014, over any individual one six day period, the price of Bitcoin has dropped more than 10%, 343 times. Of those other six day periods, but there's been 3,585 six day periods where it hasn't dropped uh, more than 10%. So 3,928 six-day periods. So 8.7% of those six-day periods have dropped more than 10%. The other 91% of those periods have not dropped 10%. As you go further and closer to uh, the end of the month, end of Q2, you'll see that that probability is increasing over time, going from 91.3%, 92.4%, 93.4%, 94.5 on three days, 95.8, 97.6. Now, this is a dynamic exercise, right? So as the price of Bitcoin falls, like the, the calculus changes. So if the price of Bitcoin were to drop to say 104,000, the delta would now that then be 8.42%. And you can see the probabilities are changing throughout that horizon. But as you get closer to the end of the quarter, uh, the probability that uh, Bitcoin drops that much in a shorter period is much smaller. Now let's go back to the existing Bitcoin price, which is $106,044. And I looked at another framework. So I looked at going back to the IBIT launch. So there's been, uh, since the IBIT launch, there's been 532 Bitcoin trading periods, uh, 532 six day Bitcoin trading periods and 532 five day, four day, three day, two day, et cetera. And, you know, in my mind, going back to IBIT is when things really systemically changed for Bitcoin and you started seeing a passive institutional bid coming in the door. And obviously the landscape is a bit different today than where it was uh, before IBIT was approved, obviously pro Bitcoin government, et cetera, yada, yada. So I wanted to look at since the IBIT launch, what is the probability on a six day period that the price of Bitcoin has fallen more than 10%, kind of taking the same exact perspective. And in this circumstance, uh, looking at historical six-day periods, there's a 96.6% chance that Bitcoin is not going to fall 10.7% uh, over that horizon. As you go closer to the end of the quarter here, you see those numbers bump up drastically. So in my mind, if I'm thinking about if I were to front run this uh, event, I would be taking into consideration these probabilities very closely. And the probabilities, you know, uh, on a further horizon out, um, if the price of Bitcoin is much lower. So if just thinking back to last Sunday, right, the price of Bitcoin dropped to 98,200. The price of Bitcoin at that point would have only need to go down 3% in order for S&P, the strategy to not qualify for the S&P 500. 
if you take those probabilities, you start to look at a much lower probability that strategy would potentially get or qualify uh, during that quarter. So each day that we get closer, the probabilities crank up and get a little bit higher. And this is kind of the framework I'm thinking about when thinking about who's who's front running this, how they're front running it, if they are front running it, what would I be looking at? And this probabilistic analysis is what I would be considering. So uh, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm pretty bullish. Uh, I, I think the probabilities are pretty high. Uh, if you look at you know the, the price of Bitcoin at 106,000 right now, I feel pretty good about that. I and mean, global tensions have seemed to cool off a little bit. Uh, and I mean, the stock market is approaching all time highs. You're seeing negative things happen in the stock market and you're seeing the price of, you know, S&P 500, QQQ, all things react positively. I think that's a pretty good indicator of where we're at in a bull market. So that's all I got. Um, I think we're going higher. There we go. Uh, also, lastly, I will not be on uh, True North this week. I, I've got uh, just a whole mess of things happening around my house. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a shit show for the next couple weeks for me. So yeah, going to take a break this week, but the whole crew is still going to go. Uh, you're going to be in really good hands and they've got a lot of cool, exciting things to talk about. So appreciate the time. Thanks for tuning in and we'll